Hey folks, welcome to Market Technical Analysis by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leader in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. Today, Wednesday, September 3rd, 2008. Well, as we get into today's market, folks, I want to just kind of go over the odds and ends in the market that occurred today. Uh, number one, we saw a pretty mixed market with a lot of little dips in it, with a lot of little rallies and buy programs coming in across the board. And one thing we did note today was that towards the end of the day, the financials really caught a bid, and it was led by Goldman Sachs. And you guys know, those of you that have been following these videos, that we follow Goldman Sachs very closely as a key indicator for the overall market and especially the financials. So today, let's take a look at the overall market as we dissect the charts and do all the technical analysis uh, keys to this market, we're going to kind of develop a little sense of what we expect in the coming week and even next week. Because today already being Wednesday, we want to really focus on Thursday, Friday, but also next week more than anything. All right. So today we see the Dow closed up about 16 points, while the NASDAQ moved down about 15 and a half, the S&P down about 2.6 as well. So it was really a mixed bag out there. Now that was really not the case about half an hour to the close. Uh, really even an hour to half an hour before the close, you saw a lot of these indexes red quite a bit. The NASDAQ was down as much as 25, 30 points, uh, while the S&P and the Dow were both lower as well. And then all of a sudden we saw the financials catch a bit. So we're going to look at those charts today as well and really focus in on what happened. All right, folks? So let's flip over to the chart of the futures and we'll go right into the analysis. All right, here's the futures, the ESU8 September 08 E mini S&P 500 contract. And you can see the whippiness of today. Now, those of you that again have been following the videos recently know we've been in a neutral stance really since midweek last week, if not even before that. Um, and we've been dead on. I mean, the market's just been whippy up and down, really mixed bag. Yesterday, we saw a gap up and a reversal. Today, we saw a whippy move up and down, really closing flat on the day across the board. Now, the key here, folks, is looking at the intraday charts, there's not much to talk about. You see a couple little buy programs coming in as the market's flip-flopped up and then also some sell-offs. One thing you can see on this chart is number one, the move up here into the 10 o'clock time frame. Remember yesterday, we had that 10 o'clock being the high, 10, 10, 30 being the high in the markets. Well, today that happened again. Note here, all right, you had a 10 o'clock high right here and a 10, 30 hit of the 200 intraday moving average. Again, the 10 o'clock happens to be the high of the day. After that, the selling comes in, you dip lower. Here you have a bounce right into the 50 uh, moving average. You have a pierce of it, but you really never close above the 50 moving average. The dip back lower, uh, right into this support line. And you can see the support line absolutely works perfectly here. All right, good support right on this line. And into the close, we rallied up on that financial strength. Now I want to just show you the XLF because this is really the intraday chart you want to pay attention to today as it did lift things off. And you can see really just kind of a up and down pattern most of the day sideways down and then all of a sudden the last half an hour you get that bid where we close almost at the highs of the day on the XLF. Now again this is the financial uh, ETF um, and you can see again that the buying did come in. Note the volume here late in the day and that's another good indicator. Uh, volumes compared to yesterday in the overall market was a little lighter but to yesterday we had that big surge on the big drop in oil you had the reversal so there's a lot of keys that caused yesterday's volume to be a little excessive today was more like an average day doing about two million contracts on the uh, S&P futures now let's take a look at the SPY okay flipping to the SPY uh, on the daily chart because remember yesterday we talked about a channel that this market's been in and we continue to feel that the market's in that channel and will remain in that channel in the near future. So going into the next couple days in the week, you have to assume that this market will continue to trade in that channel. Now I want to draw this channel in again because at the lows today, we really almost came down and tested it. And I want to show you that. Remember, here's the base of the channel that we've been in. And you can see it all the way from back here hitting. Uh, here's another hit, it bounced off, hit it again, bounced off. And really we came down and just about tagged that again today before rallying off of it. So you can see how powerful that support line is. And we drew these channels in yesterday, and I'll draw on the top side of it as well so we can really keep track. So again, this is the channel we've been in. You can see how we've been bouncing up, down, and all around really in this channel. And so far we haven't been able to break out one way or the other. And yesterday we said to, to you guys we may test the lower side of that channel today. We really did do that earlier in the day and they were able to rally it off that low and the lower end of that channel to close really the market on the flat line. The SPY was down about seven cents today, which is really a flat day in the market. All right, so we continue to feel that the market over the next couple days into Thursday and Friday will be choppy. 
all right? And this choppiness is usually due to the, the hangover effect from a long weekend, the August effect coming through. Uh, we're noting a couple key hits of, uh, of some trend lines, uh, resistance points in a few of the you know broker-dealer indexes and a couple other cha charts that we've been analyzing very closely and calculating. But going into early next week and mid next week, we are seeing a, a fair possibility of an up move starting for a couple weeks, all right? And again, it's a little far out. I want to really analyze this with my partner, Nick, and the financials and, and the different calculations that we do of our proprietary techniques to try and isolate it a little more. And we're not talking about a monster size move up here. We're just talk, talking about maybe a trend moving to a, a positive bias in this market coming on Friday. Uh, it could start as early as, you know, the next few days, but we more so see choppy trading the next couple days going into next Monday. All right, so I just want to let everyone know that as of now, we'll, we'll keep a bias of pretty much neutral, maybe a slight bit of a positive tint in there uh, going into Thursday, Friday here. But starting next week, as long as everything shapes up, and again, that's the big if, as long as everything is par like we're seeing it now, and things could change, but as of now, we're seeing things according to B as they are then we should see a little bit of a move starting maybe early next week uh, for, for a week or so, give or take, week 10 days, somewhere in that range of business trading days, okay? So keep that in mind, folks. Again, note the volume pickup here in the early part of September compared to last week. You can see a little bit of excess in that. And one thing, again, that I really do want to point out is let's note Goldman Sachs because this is really what we noted, and we noted this in the chat room early on, is that Goldman Sachs started to get a bid here, all right? And you saw this little bit of consolidation, really consolidation all afternoon, on Goldman Sachs staying in a tight range even when the market was selling off and I want to point that out see the sideways move on Goldman here and now let's take a look at the SPY in that time frame you can see that same time frame you had a little bit of a dip here positive uh, indicator there with Goldman Sachs moving flat and the rest of the market selling off all of a sudden the rest of the market with Goldman Sachs as we flip back to Goldman Sachs started to catch a bid as Goldman broke out of this channel and off to the races to the upside with Goldman closing very strong Look at the volume also, heavy volume on the upside. So again, that gives us a little indicator there that that's a positive sign for the markets. There's no doubt about it that the, the markets generally follow the financials, especially Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs leads, the financials follow. Wherever the financials are going, oftentimes the market follows. Now, the NASDAQ's the one conundrum here because the NASDAQ really has been weak the last couple days. It's, it was the strongest index for a while. Now we're seeing a few profits being taken on that and a little more weakness. Now, you can note the drop here, right? All right, check out that, that little bit of a, a chart, and I can actually draw that a little more accurately on the NASDAQ where you can see really the channel that we moved down. And I showed this yesterday as well. You can see the strength of the move up on the NASDAQ but then once we got to this point, and again, it was a beautiful fake out that we had called for a dip here, and we were dead on again on that call on the NASDAQ topping out here after it broke the 200. A lot of amateurs think that's a, a bullish sign. In fact, that can be a, sometimes a whipsaw angle by the institutions to reverse it and take their money. Um, but in any case, you can see the downdraft now compared to the SPY, which has been in a sideways channel. So right here, granted, the angle of the NASDAQ is more like this, while the SPY, which is the S&P mirroring in uh, ETF or S, uh, index, you can see it kind of being a lot more flat. So it didn't rise as much as the NASDAQ, but at the same time, you're seeing consolidation on the SPY, while the NASDAQ here has continued to stay weak. Now, the NASDAQ, in its defense, is sitting on support. you got the 50 moving average here, and I'll draw a line over that so those of you that can't see it, as it is a little dark, there's the 50 moving average. You basically settled right on top of it after dipping below today. All right, so keep in mind, NASDAQ, again, has been the weaker of the indexes. It does seem that a little money flow has come out of the tech stocks uh, into, you know, some of the financial plays, some of the uh, Dow, you know, stocks and uh, the S&P stocks. So that's something that we have to also monitor now because if technology starts to or continues to be weak when the market changes back to being strong, do we see the financials lead along with a lot of these other players in the Dow while the NASDAQ still stays a little weaker? All right, so we'll continue to monitor that, but keep in mind that the NASDAQ on key support here of the 50 moving average. Now, let's take a look at a couple of these, in, these NASDAQ stocks because uh, research in motion really getting hammered the last few days. This is the chart of research in motion on the daily and you can see how it had a very nice move up when the NASDAQ was strong. And then you almost got a little bit of an M top here. All right, note that. All right, you had bounced right off of the 50 uh, moving average, M top, double top, in fact, right there. And then you came down, a little bounce right off there, MA pattern formation there. M, small a, and a dip down to the 200. Again, research in motion on support here, but again, we'll have to follow that to see if it holds with the NASDAQ. Note the volume increase also is not necessarily a good thing on the sell-off there. Uh, on research in motion. 
All right, uh, let me look across the board, see what else we had. Baidu really got hammered today, and uh, the Chinese stocks continue to be under uh, quite a bit of pressure, although I will be honest, folks, I, do am, I am starting to look at the Chinese market as a possible angle to play now over the next couple weeks on the positive side. So keep that in mind. A couple ways to play it is the PGJ is number one. You can see the chart really at the bottom support line right around here. Also, the FXI is another way. I'm not there yet, though. I want to caution you. I'm not quite there yet. Obviously, I want to at least make sure you have gap fill right here. Uh, maybe a double bottom break, so we flush out a couple stops there as well. But we'll keep an eye on it. And again, that's just something that I am looking at and, and somewhat interested in on the charts of the Chinese market. All right, folks, that's pretty much it. A very interesting day. Again, we're keeping that neutral stance with a slight bit of a possible tint, tint going into next week. Uh, we'll continue to update you each day in these videos. Come join the chat room. Fantastic day in the chat room. We had Crocs today as a swing trade from a couple days ago. What a move on Crocs of over almost 15%. Uh, we had been holding this for a couple days. Really took off today as I had expected. Have a wonderful day. Join the Swing Trade Alerts. We'll talk.